A wooden crate of mass 20 kilograms is pulled in a straight line along a rough horizontal floor. So that means there is friction. It's pulled using a handle attached to the crate. The handle is inclined at an angle of alpha to the floor, as shown in figure 1, where tan alpha is equal to 3 over 4. The tension is 40 newtons, as again shown in the diagram. We're told the coefficient of friction between the crate and the floor. The crate is modeled as a particle and the handle is modeled as a light rod. Use the model to find the acceleration of the crate. So this object is being pulled towards the right by that 40 newton force. So the acceleration acts towards the right, let's call it A. Let's draw the forces. So we'll have a normal reaction force, R. We'll have a weight force, 20 G. We will have a frictional force that will act towards the left. So it's being pulled towards the right. So frictional force always opposes motion. So it will go towards the left. If it's moving, then the frictional force is the max that it can possibly be. That is mu r. We can then resolve the 40 newton force vertically and horizontally. Using Sokotoa, this would be 40 sine alpha, and this would be 40 cos alpha. 40 cos alpha acts towards the right, and the sine alpha acts upwards, the 40 sine alpha. They flow between the same two points as the 40 newton force does. So 40 newtons goes from here to here. These two components should flow in the same direction. Okay, and then we're trying to work out acceleration. Let's first just work out what sine alpha and cos alpha are. So right angle triangle, this is alpha, this is 90. Opposite is three, adjacent is four. Hypotenuse will be five using Pythagoras. Sine alpha is opposite over hypotenuse and cos alpha is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we want to work out the acceleration. So let's consider the resultant force horizontally. If it's accelerating towards the right, 40 cos alpha should be bigger than the mu r. The force towards the right should be bigger than the force towards the left. And when we take the two things away, if we do the 40 cos alpha minus the mu r, that should give us the resultant force or the overall force towards the right. If this is the resultant force, this should be equal to ma. Now we can put in all the things that we know. So cos alpha is four over five. So this is 40 times four over five minus the mu r. Mu is 0.14. R we don't know. Mass is 20. Acceleration is a. I'll just simplify this. So 40 times four over five is 32. The rest stays the same. So we want to work out acceleration. But in this equation, which I'll call one, we don't have r. r is an unknown. So we're going to have to work out r using a different equation. Now we can consider the vertical direction. So if it's accelerating horizontally, that means the resultant force is horizontal. There is therefore no resultant vertical force, in which case the upward forces should equal the downward forces. The upward forces are the r and the 40 sine alpha. This and this, they add together to make the total downward force, which is 20g. So this, these two added together should be 20g. From this, we can work out what r is. So r is equal to 20g minus 40 sine alpha. Sine alpha was 3 over 5. Type this in, we get 172 newtons. So now we know what r is, we can put that back into equation 1. So 32 minus 0 0.14 times 172 is equal to 20a. So then that becomes 7.92 is equal to 20a. Acceleration is then 7.92 over 20 which is 0 0.396. And now for part B. So the crate is now pushed along the same floor using the handle. The handle is again inclined at the same angle alpha to the floor, and the thrust in the handle is 40 newtons as shown in figure two below. Explain briefly why the acceleration of the crate would now be less than the acceleration of the crate found in part A. Okay, so let's consider the components of that 40 newton force. 
So we have the horizontal component is still 40 cos alpha, the object is still being pushed towards the right, and the vertical component is still 40 sine alpha, but the key difference here is now that that 40 sine alpha acts downwards into the ground. That will affect our normal reaction force. So I'll just draw this out. This is our normal reaction force, R. We have our weight force still going down 20 G. The frictional force still goes to the left. Again, that frictional force opposes motion. This 40 cos alpha is unchanged, so it will still push the mass towards the right. So mu R opposes that. Now, if we consider forces in the vertical direction, Vertically, it's still in equilibrium. There is no resultant force vertically, as it's accelerating horizontally. The resultant force is horizontal. So that means that upward forces equal downward forces. So if I form an equation for that, upward forces are, and then the downward forces would be the 40 sine alpha and the 20 g. So upward force r equals the two downward forces. Now let's compare this to the equation that we had before for r. If you look over here, r plus 40 sine alpha is equal to 20g. If we rearrange this for r, so bring the 40 sine alpha to the other side, this is what we got when we did that, 20g minus the 40 sine alpha. Here we have 20g plus the 40 sine alpha. So here it's 20g minus 40 sine alpha, here it's 20g plus 40 sine alpha. That means that this reaction force will be bigger than what it was before, which should make sense. If we're pushing the object into the ground, the reaction force upwards that opposes that force pushing it into the ground should increase. So this means that R is bigger, as we have a component of the 40 Newton force pushing the object into the ground. And what does this then do? Well, if R is bigger, that means that mu R is bigger. Mu R is the frictional force. If R is bigger, mu R is bigger as well. That means we have a smaller overall forwards force. If the backwards force is bigger, the forwards force is unchanged, we have a smaller overall forwards force, so a smaller resultant force. And if we have a smaller resultant forwards force, we will have less acceleration, as f is equal to ma, where f is the resultant force.